Welcome to this module, Emerging Understandings of Disability. This module is part of the Inclusive Education Paraprofessional Training Series. The objectives for this module are first, to understand a beyond compliance mindset and the implications of this idea for the classroom. The second is to recognize emerging ways of understanding disability in our society. So first, I'll describe a beyond compliance mindset and how that can inform the work of educators. Second, I'll talk about some new ways of understanding disability that have emerged out of the field of disability studies. And lastly, I'll introduce some deeper dive activities so you can go further into the content that we cover. I wanna start off with this cartoon image. It's a classroom with students and a teacher sitting at their desk. On the bottom left-hand corner is a student with a disability who uses a wheelchair. And the student is sitting at a separate desk with a paraeducator. And the cartoonist has drawn an island with sand and a palm tree and water to illustrate that the student is very much isolated from the rest of their peers. The caption reads, Island in the mainstream. Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Cooper are still trying to figure out why Fred doesn't feel like part of the class. Take a look at this image and think about why might Fred not feel like part of the class? I'll come back to this image, but I think it illustrates the point of a beyond compliance mindset. Oftentimes in schools, professionals are focused on legal compliance for students with disabilities. What this means is that we're ensuring that we follow the law. That's absolutely essential. We need to give students with disabilities what they're entitled to on paper. We need to put that into action in the classroom. But moving down to the second point, following the law itself does not always lead to meaningful and dignifying participation in education for students with disabilities. So let's go back to this image and think about, we could say looking at this image that the student with a disability is actually getting what is legally required for the student to be provided. He is in the general education classroom, the least restrictive environment uh, with his uh, peers with and without disabilities. And he is receiving support, having a paraeducator. So this might be legally compliant, but is the student in this picture having access to an education that provides really meaningful academic and social benefits with his non-disabled peers? Uh, is the student going to feel dignified or valued in the classroom? Probably not. So ultimately, uh, just providing the student what we're legally required to do doesn't mean they're gonna get the best experience. So what we need, moving down to the th third bullet point here, is students need allies who are going to advocate for education that goes beyond compliance. In the example here, uh, allies who are going to collaborate to ensure that the student is able to have really meaningful and rich uh, academic and social uh, uh, participation in the classroom. So we need to be able to follow the law, but also ensure that we're going beyond it to, to work towards the goals of inclusive education. So with that mindset to start, I wanna introduce some emerging or new ways of understanding disability. Uh, these have come out of an academic field called disability studies over the past several decades, and also very much have come from people with disabilities themselves, uh, pushing forward new ways of thinking about disability. So let's start off uh, with the idea of moving from a so, uh, social to medical model, moving from disability as an individual issue to a social issue. So on the screen here, we have an image of an individual who's using a wheelchair and they're at the bottom of a set of stairs. There's a sign that reads, way in, everyone welcome. Well, for this person, this may not be a welcoming or accessible entrance to the building. On the left-hand side, there's a thought bubble that reads, her impairment is the problem. They should cure her or give her prosthetics. This reflects a medical model of disability where when we encounter an issue between a person and society, often we think about the problem being belonging to the person. The person needs to change in order to be able to participate. But another way of thinking about that on the right-hand side, the thought bubble reads, the stairs are the problem. They should build a ramp. 
this reflects a shift to a social model of disability, where instead of thinking about only changing the person, we think about how do we remove the barrier, in this case, the stairs by providing a ramp, in order to allow the person to participate fully in society. That's a social model of disability. And that's what we're trying to work towards. Another key idea here uh, related to a social model of disability is the idea of ableism. Ableism is discrimination towards people with disabilities. And there is a image here on the right-hand side of the screen where it says ableism, how to end the prejudice no one talks about. And you may not be familiar with the term ableism, but it very much is similar to other uh, isms like racism and sexism that talk about uh, discrimination based on race or sex. In this case, we're talking about discrimination based on ability or disability. And these examples, uh, we've already covered one in terms of a physical example could be uh, the fact that uh, a ramp was not built in order to provide an accessible entrance for an individual uh, who uses a wheelchair. But there are many other examples of discrimination towards people with disabilities. Structural examples, we could even think about that in terms of school instruction and the structure of lessons. For example, if we have a student in our, in our class who is deaf and we're showing a video without closed captioning so the student isn't able to fully access the content, we have a student who's blind in the class and the teacher is giving a presentation with a lot of images but isn't describing the images on the screen, then that's not gonna be accessible for a student who's blind. We also can see discrimination in terms of attitudes and assumptions. Even sometimes those may be well-intended, but we might think that, for example, because a student has a disability label of intellectual disability or learning disability, we might assume that therefore they're less capable than a student who doesn't have a disability, or maybe someone might assume that that student with a disability isn't gonna benefit from going to college, so we shouldn't even really think about that for that child. And those sort of low expectations um, still can be harmful for people with disabilities. And language is another issue that can reinforce discrimination. For example, the idea of uh, referring to people with disabilities as suffering from their disability, assuming that they're always suffering, uh, or talking about someone who uses a wheelchair as being wheelchair bound, as if they, they live their whole life in their wheelchair and they're bound to it, when in fact they actually use it uh, as, as a mobility device, as a tool essentially. So the bottom line with ableism is to, is to start to recognize how uh, our society in terms of the way it's built, in terms of tradition, may not have been designed in a way that embraces people with disabilities. And so we need to start to think, how do we change the environment, the cultural, the physical environment, so that we're actually proactively embracing the needs and differences of people with disabilities. So to summarize these ideas, uh, successful inclusion means going above and beyond the minimum of what is legally required for students with disabilities. That's what a beyond compliance mindset is all about. The second is new understandings of disability focus on how to change the environment by removing barriers to participation. So of course, we're always gonna to wanna to support the student to grow and change as an individual, but that growth can best happen if we are also addressing aspects of the environment. If we're also addressing disability as a social issue. From a social model perspective, we try to remove the barriers in the educational environment or the social environment for that student. Third, ableism is a form of discrimination that uh, is important to be aware of, and it's based on people's abilities or disabilities. And so what we wanna do is be able to move past some of those uh, discriminatory attitudes or uh, ways of teaching um, or ways of designing physical spaces. Ultimately, if we do this, if we reduce ableism and exclusion, that can lead to more equitable education for all students. Here are some deeper dive activities. The first one is a video that will give you some more insight into the social model of disability. The second is a short reading from the Society of Disability Studies. Uh, and it explains what disability studies as an academic and research field is all about. The third is a TED talk from the disability activist Stella Young entitled, I'm Not Your Inspiration. Stella Young talks a little bit about the social model, and about what's wrong with the idea of people with disabilities 
often being seen as the inspiration for people without disabilities. The last one is a longer article from Lydia XC Brown, and it talks a little bit more about ableism and particularly the role of language in perpetuating negative stereotypes or attitudes related to disability. This is the end of module one. So once you've completed all sections of module one, be sure to complete the module one check for understanding. All participants must complete each check for understanding prior to moving on to the next module. Here are the image credits for these slides. And here are the references. Thank you for your attention in this module.